Hi everyone, um, uh, welcome back to this S4 IGCSE biology lesson again. It's uh, me again, Mr. Paul. And uh, in today's lesson, I will, uh, 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 first of all, we'll uh, take a review of the previous lesson that we, uh, we did uh, uh, previously. Uh, in our previous lesson, we looked at uh, uh, how we can use the DNA to classify living organisms. We looked at uh, the various classification uh, systems, the hierarchy. And then we also look at the, the, the five major kingdoms, okay? Um, uh, I gave you a small exercise um, uh, to try out uh, previously. So uh, here are the answers to those uh, questions that I gave uh, uh, before, all right? Uh, we can go through the, 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 the slide very fast, the, the, the question very fast. Um, uh, the binomial naming system to identify all living organisms gives an Indian elephant, scientific name uh, Elephas maximus. So I ask you which part of this refers to the genus and which part refers to the species. The genus is elephants and then the species is maximus. And then it is this, the question, uh, this part B of the question. Okay, you've been given some uh, English name and the scientific name of some uh, uh, organisms there. Okay, the cat family. And then you are asked, state the common and the English name of, of, of two members of the same genus. Okay, you can either uh, say it's bobcat and European uh, uh, lynx or uh, European lynx, Iberian uh, lynx, or uh, uh, bobcat and uh, Iberian lynx. Or you can talk about jaguar and uh, leopard, or a jaguar and a, a lion, or a tiger and a lion. All those uh, can be named. Now, name the genus that has only one species. Okay, that's only one species is a, a, syno, a synonyx. Now, I'm um, uh, in our today's lesson, we're going to look at uh, classification of vertebrates. We're going to classify vertebrates in vertebrates and plants. Today's lesson objectives are as, uh, are as follows. Okay. Uh, by the end of this lesson, the learner shall be able to describe the main features of the classes within the vertebrates and the invertebrates. It's important to know that we're going to be like looking at arthropods only. Name examples of animals belonging to these uh, different groups, okay? We'll be able to classify plants into these, uh, uh, into the ones that reproduce using spores and the ones that reproduce using seeds or the flowering plants. And lastly, we look at how we can use the classification key or the dichotomous key to classify living organisms. Now, um, uh, it's important to know that this, um, uh, most of these topics that we're actually covering here are uh, a repetition. They are quite familiar topics that you must have learned in your lower secondary uh, uh, levels, S1, S2, S3. So we'll just be brushing through them, just going through them uh, very, very uh, briefly. Okay, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, to start with uh, classification of vertebrates, so these are the animals um, with backbones called um, uh, we have the first group are the fish. What classify fish? You know the main features of a fish. Okay, um, uh, they have scales. The features they have scales. They have they breathe using their gills. Okay, uh, okay. They have uh, fins for moving. Okay, in water and of course their body are normally streamlined. Okay. Now um, uh, the next group of vertebrates are the amphibians. These are like the uh, these are like the frogs. Okay, uh, they have. Uh, soft, moist skin, okay? They normally lay their eggs in, in water. Uh, adults can live on land. The larvae have gills, but the adult ones normally breathe using their lungs, okay? And then we have reptiles, like the snakes and the crocodiles. Now, these ones ha normally have dry, scaly skin. Their, sca their skin are quite dry and scaly, and the, the kind of eggs they lay are eggs with the rubbery shells. They are a bit soft, rubber, rubbery shells, they're not hard shells like the case of the birds. Now, um, uh, the next group are the birds, or can also be referred to as the aves. Now, the birds have feathers, okay? Their forelimbs have been modified into wings, okay? They have, uh, their forelimbs have been modified into wings. Uh, they, are, they lay normally eggs with hard shells. Birds also have uh, beaks. Now, the last group of uh, vertebrates are the mammals, okay? The mammals, uh, they normally like have, uh, including human beings, okay? They have hairs on their skin, okay? They have placenta, okay? They are endothermic. That means they are able to keep their body temperature uh, normal all the time, despite the changes in the in, uh, external temperature. 
They feed the young ones on milk from the mammary glands. Okay, they have diaphragm, they, and uh, they are heterodonts. In other words, they have different uh, types of uh, teeth. Okay, we have the incisors, the canines, the molars, and etc. And their heart have four chambers. Okay, now you look at uh, those animals there. Now, how about the invertebrates? The invertebrates here, these are the uh, uh, animals without backbones. We have so many groups of invertebrates, but it's important to know that according to your syllabus, here we'll only be talking about, we are going to be talking about arthropods only, okay? We won't consider the other groups of invertebrates like the mollusk, the echinoderms, and, and the rest, and those other worms, okay? We'll only look at the characteristic features of the arthropod groups, Okay, so the arthropods are those invertebrates with jointed limbs or jointed legs. Okay, their legs, if you look at their, their legs, they are normally uh, like have joints. They are have joints, like you can see the, uh, the, 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 the spider there. And of course, you can see the, the, the prawns there. Okay, um, uh, their bodies are normally again divided into parts, otherwise referred to as segments. Okay. Uh, they have external, external skeleton, also referred to as exoskeleton, okay? And this exoskeleton, when they become normally big, they become, when they grow and become bigger than the exoskeleton, they normally shed it out, a process referred to as molting, okay? And uh, in addition, all arthropods normally they have some feelers, okay, or antennae on their heads. Now, the arthropods are divided into four main groups. We have the first group are the crustaceans, like we have the, the crabs, okay? Uh, now, the crabs, uh, they have, crabs have gills for breathing, okay? They, uh, they are having more than four pairs of jointed legs, and if you look at their, their exoskeleton, it's quite hard, or we can call it chalky exoskeleton. The next group are the arachnids. Here we have the spiders and the scorpions, okay? These ones, their bodies are divided into two parts, okay? That is, uh, the, their thorax and their head have been connected together to form what we call a cephalothorax, okay? So they have only two body parts, parts the, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. And then they have four pairs of legs, or they have eight legs, okay? They have no feelers, see? But they have poisonous uh, fangs, okay? That they use to disable uh, their prey, okay? And they use, they breathe using what you call book lungs. The third group of arthropods are the myriapods, okay? Now, the myriapods, are the, the millipedes and the centipedes. These ones are characterized by the so many legs. They have so many legs in, 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 in their body, okay? And in fact, you find that the body has many segments divided into so many parts, and each segment has a jointed leg, okay? Each segment has at least a pair of jointed legs. Now, um, the last group of um, Arthropods are the insects. Now, insects have three pairs of legs. They have three pairs of legs, or they are, you can say they have four legs. Their body is divided into three body parts. We have the head, thorax, and, and, and the abdomen. Okay, they have two pairs of wings, okay? And they have uh, one pair of uh, antennae, or the feelers. They normally breathe using uh, spiracles, okay? You can see those tiny spiracles on the abdomen. Okay, those are spi uh, tiny spiracles in the abdomen there. Okay, and uh, that's it about uh, the arthropods. Um, uh, now, classifying plants. Generally, we normally classify plants into two major groups. We have those plants which normally produce using their powder, uh, powdery spores, spores, okay, and we have another group of plants which normally produce using seeds, okay? They use the flowers and the, uh, the flowers develop into seeds, okay? Now, um, uh, we, in this particular part, we'll be looking at uh, the ferns, which are the plants which uh, uh, reproduce using spores, okay? Now, the fern or the fern plants, uh, they have special leaves called uh, fronds, okay? You, you must have seen uh, uh, these uh, these uh, ferns, they're normally very common everywhere, especially in Seychelles there. We have so many fern plants around us, okay? And, uh, and we, we normally even use some of their leaves for decorations, 
All right. Um, uh, the fans do not make any flowers. They are non-flowering plants. They don't have any flowers. Okay. But they normally make uh, some powdery spores, especially underneath their their leaves. Okay, underneath their leaves, we have those pores, and these pores are the ones which, when they fall onto the ground, they grow into new fern plants. Okay, they have proper roots, stems, and uh, leaves. Now, flowering plants. These plants reproduce sexually by means of seeds. Okay, they normally make. You know how we normally like uh, the plants. These plants, the the flowers. Okay, from the flower, the flower gets pollinated, and then we have fertilization happens. Okay, and then this particular flower, it dries up, and then of course ends up making a fruit, and then the fruit with the seeds inside. Now, uh, the flowering plants are divided into two major uh, plants. We have the monocots or monocot monocotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous plants or the dicots. Okay, the monocots are like the maize, the coconut. And of course, the daikos are like the orange tree, takamaka tree, and uh, beans, uh, etc. and etc. Now, why do you call why do you call them monocot and why do you call them daikot? Okay. Now, the monocot has only one cotyledon. The cotyledon is uh, like this, is like the wi that white part, the the seed leaf, the seed li uh, leaf of that particular seed. Okay. We it has one cotyledon. You cannot actually split it into two. Uh, cotyledon is just one compact, like you see the case of the maize seed there. Uh, the dicots, on the other hand, they have two cotyledons. You you must have eaten uh, peas, okay, or beans. You can actually split those two white parts into two separate parts. So we normally call those two cotyledons. So those are the dicots. Now, um, uh, if you want to, uh, when you're looking at compa comparison between a monocot and a, a dicot, we look at uh, how their, their roots look like, how their leaves look like, and it is it. And of course, we talked about the cotyledons also, okay? Now, the leaves of monocots are normally narrow and long, okay? And the veins found in there, they're normally parallel veins, like the case of a coconut. Many of you are familiar with coconut uh, uh, plants, or let's say maize plants. Look at the leaves of the maize plants. They're normally long, okay, a bit long, and of course, narrow leaves. And you look at the veins, okay, they're more or less parallel, parallel veins. Whereas for the dicots, you look at the other plants, the leaves of the, of the dicot, they normally like have what you call netted veins, the uh, net, network of veins. And then the roots of uh, monocots, like you look at the root of, uh, of a coconut tree, they're normally very fibrous, fibrous roots. And for a dicot, they normally have a top root. And then from the top root, you'll find some lateral roots coming out of the main top root. Now, looking at the flower patterns of these monocots and dicots. Okay, for the monocots, you look at the flower pattern, normally has three petals. Okay, a pattern flower with three petals. However, for the dicot, the flower pattern normally has five petals, like you can see um, on the diagram there. The, uh, the last bit you're going to be looking at here is the classification key or the dichotomous key. Now, this was a special key, a special key designed uh, to actually like uh, uh, name organisms from a picture. Okay? Now, how does it work? This particular uh, dichotomous key, it has a set of questions. Okay? With these questions have two descriptions or two questions. Okay, at each step, from the step one up to the last step. So you simply answer a yes or a no to each question, then go to the next description or next step, and then go to the next step until you finally reach to the, the name of that particular organism you are looking at. Okay, so um, uh, dichotomous means branching into two. Okay, it means branching two. So in each whatever description, we have two description or two questions in each step. Okay, and then you'll, uh, you'll keep on like uh, looking at these animals in the picture, okay, and uh, looking at the description given in the key, okay, the key has description plus the names of these living organisms, and from here you can actually be able to identify the names of these particular organisms. Now, we look at an example, an example uh, uh, of uh, 
how we can use the dichotomous key to classify uh, these uh, living organisms to make it easier for you to understand. Okay? Now, um, uh, use the key uh, below, the dichotomous key below, to identify the animals given there. We have animals A, B, C, D, and E. We don't know the names of these animals. We don't know what they are. Okay? Their names are found in the key there. Okay? So the key has description of these, of these uh, animals okay? plus the names of these animals. So you start in the key, you start from each step. You have step number one, okay? and then you go to step number two or three or four, and it will always guide you. If, like when you start to step number one, it will always tell you if it has legs, for instance. Do you go to two? Okay, or is that no, uh, has no legs? You go to step number four. Okay, like for instance, now let's say we want to classify organism A. Okay, we begin. We look at the key there. So organism A does it has leg or has no leg? We say it has no leg. It has no leg. We go to step number four. We go to step number four there. So does it has a shell or has no shell? Organism A has no shell, so organism A, A is actually an earthworm. So A, you write the name there as earthworm. So you continue going through all these, uh, uh, all the, the key and looking at those animals and you'll, you'll finish and you get all the names of those animals in, uh, uh, in, the, in the key given there. So I'll uh, give you like uh, one minute to try out and figure out the names of other of the rest of the animals okay and then i'll give you the answers in the next slide Now, let's just see whether you got all the questions uh, correctly, all the answers correctly, okay? So if you, you use the key correctly, you'll find that uh, animal A, as we, to we, we did this one earlier together, it's uh, an atom, okay? The animal B is a spider, uh, C is a snail, D is a wasp, and then the last one, E, is an housefly, okay? So it's important, you use the, the picture of the animals there, Okay, and then the key gives you the description of those particular animals plus their names. Okay, so and the most important thing to remember is that in each, when identifying each animal or each organism, you must begin from the top. You must begin from the top stage, and then from there it will guide you all the way up to the name of that particular organism. Now, to summarize our today's lesson, um. Uh, uh, we have looked at the various groups of uh, vertebrates and uh, invertebrates, and also we have, uh, we have tried to classify plants uh, into those that produce using, reproduce using uh, spores, and those ones like the fan plants, and those that uh, reproduce using uh, uh, seeds, like the, um, uh, the, like the, uh, the flowering plants. Okay? Uh, We've also classified uh, flowering plants into the monocots and the dicots. We looked at the different features, features of a monocot and the dicots. Um, uh, we also uh, try to use uh, dichotomous key or the classification key to classify certain organisms. So um, uh, I have a set of questions uh, here for you. You can always use your mobile phone, take pictures of these uh, slides okay or you can record okay try out these questions and uh, the answers to these questions i will give you in uh, uh, the next lesson okay so have a look at those questions try them out okay um, uh, that is it for today thank you for staying tuned in have a pleasant uh, day and stay safe.